We're back, and we you have don't say. we have we have glasses of alcoholic beverages along with some water at the table, so that's good. And it makes me realize. So my family considers me pretentious because anytime we have a beer in the house, I I require that you. Um, pour it into a glass. Absolutely. So I am curious. I feel like you probably got this question a bunch, but yeah. what's the right way That's a great question. To, to drink beer, according to Hugh and Caroline? Well, first off, uh, <laughs> you always put it in a glass. So I'm right? You're Absolutely. Right. I can and, go home and, and say I'm right. And, and when you pour it, you pour it right down the goddamn middle of the glass. <laughs> None of this candy ass down the side crap. Hell no. Right down. Down the middle of the glass. And you let it and overflow you, and all well, around you? Well, you prefer not to spill it. But, okay. by the, but having said that, down patience is a virtue. You want to you wanna release the CO2, which is a flavor mask. You want to release the aromas. Because when you're spending $12 a six-pack on quality beer... If you don't, if you drink it out of the bottle or drink it out of the can, you've cut your nose out of the equation, oh, and your wow. your sense of smell is where about eighty percent of your ability to determine flavor yep. comes from. Okay. So if it's in a glass and you've allowed it to sort of volatilize, you're releasing all the crap you just paid for. God. So yeah, put it in a goddamn glass. <laughs> <laughs> so glad I got the passion of you about how to drink it. That no, that that makes total sense to me. Right. I and mean, even I would say canned beer too. And cans obviously are yeah the worst. The, well, I the worst. Say the worst because we sell. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But pour your canned beer yeah, in a if glass. You have the okay. I was, uh, good. I, was I, I mean, I realize that there okay. are times when you know you're drinking canned beer for a reason. You're on the golf course, or you're on a sailboat, or whatever. And maybe that's not conducive to a glass. Yeah. But right. for God's sake, get yourself somewhere where you can pour it in a goddamn glass. Can we pour it in a solo cup? Does that work? That works. Solo cup works fine. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh man. Okay. That's well, good. I was just thinking about being out on the boat. And stuff. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I get plastic it. Plastic cups are fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. What should we try first? What you pour? I poured. I wouldn't go drink with... after me, although it is allergies. Let's just be on the safe side. You want to try that? I already did, and it's amazing. It's amazing. This is well, the cherry limeade. That's the cherry limeade. So and the cherry limeade is wonderful. Yeah. Last year, we introduced a like, line of crafted just... cocktails as part of our portfolio. We mm. currently have four flavors out, so you're drinking the cherry limeade. Yep. We also have an orange crush, which obviously is a big popular drink in Maryland, so we had yep. to. Okay. We have a watermelon crush and then a strawberry lemonade. So they're all... 7.5% ABV made with real vodka, natural ingredients. I think they turned out very, very well. And you're I'm just doing the vodka here? No. 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 We're looking into doing that. So you have to have a distiller's permit to handle spirits. Oh, to so, even handle it? Yes. Because mm-hmm. you pay the taxes differently, and it's a, it's a different license. So okay. we're. I'm looking into doing that. This is probably when you see 98% of these things that are on the market. They're sourcing yeah. grain-neutral spirits, and then you're doing the blending. Yep. So, Got it's, it. it's pretty typical. Which Very one's cool. this one? That's the orange crush. That's orange That's crush. Right. Yeah. Right. So we have, yeah, two other flavors plus that one. And that, I mean, to me, it tastes like an orange crush. Yeah. Orange crush in a can. I have not tried any of your. Do you guys want? To so those are out now. Yeah, we're excited about them. I think it'll be great for the spring and the summertime. When How passionate are you about drinking those out of a glass? The same argument applies. Is that the aromatics are key. 90% of these are going to be consumed by people out of a can on a beach. Out of the pool on the beach. Exactly. So, and that's why you, you see almost none of those are not produced in cans. Okay. I would love to run them on my bottling line. My bottling line is much more efficient than my canning line. I can see that you you got some mixed feelings about the can. (laughs) I'm old enough that I still prefer my beer out of a bottle than a can. But going there, back there to are that, pluses and minuses. Yeah. yeah, the generational thing too, and just what the market's mm-hmm. telling us. I mean, I'm 33. I prefer can. Yep. So. Yeah, I feel like we had this. Yeah, I feel like I had to be able to provide, yeah. you know, both packaging right. formats. Right. 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 Because right. we talked earlier before we were recording just mm-hmm. about that tension, that good tension you're probably never going to get rid of of what you as the creator right. love and want, but the market's telling you another answer. Got to listen you, to and, the market. Got to listen. Right. In business. Right. The mission of business is, among other things, to stay in business. Mm -hmm. And why is that as important is because you've got folks who work here and we want them to continue to be able to feed their families and all Mm -hmm. the rest of that stuff. So when you're running a small company, it's not just about 
the owners. It's about everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I take that mission very seriously. Yep. So. Yep. And if you're lucky, you get the market response to what you're doing. Yes. And then, and then you still get a chance to do your art. And and on the and, side. and and but you also got to understand that you know the nature of small business is that things run in cycles. Mm. So when you feel like you're on top of the world, save some mm. of the nuts for yeah. the winter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because it's coming. Are you coming. saying maybe the can will go away someday, but the bottle never will? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I have no idea. I mean, my crystal <laughs> yeah. ball has been in the shop for a very long time. I don't think cans, I don't think cans are going away. That's a good line. I, I, I think that cans are the, it's just only going to increase. I think you're probably right. Although, you got to think about the business we're in, too. We're in the alcoholic beverage industry, and alcoholic beverages are such a social you know, part of life. You go to a restaurant or you're golfing or by the pool or the beach or whatever. And, you know, so just the cans are more yeah. conducive conducive for those. They go to more places. Yeah, they I'm, go to more I'm places I'm thankful sure. that my local pool has a BYOB policy mm -hmm. that is conducive. It, it, the only thing you can't have is glass. Right, oh. So right. i got to bring exactly. the cans. So all summer we're buying cans. Gotcha. Yeah. So that Buying. is our impending doom, the one that you yeah. have in your hand now. So impending doom is a newer series of beers for us. So it's a it's a rotating series of double IPAs. So the one that you have in your hand right now is called Impending Doom Fuzzy Navel. It has brewed with peach it's puree so and apricot. Yeah, it's a hazy IPA, double I should say, nine and a half percent. But yeah, you can smell and taste some of those. It is yeah. a beer with true testicular aromas. fortitude. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you drink a couple of those. Good night. <laughs> good night. But that actually very is very tasty. good. That'd be a great end to like a radio ad right there. For <laughs> just you and that accent. Oh my gosh, don't encourage him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey. I have to do it with the pirate accent. Yeah. Yes. Y yeah. Road with two testes and old fortitude. <laughs> <laughs> You're very good at that. <laughs> so that's right. You came from the theater. I did. Right? I did. I enjoyed it. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Haven't done it in. 40 plus years. That was going to be my next question. Have you exercised, flexed that muscle in any way? No, I really have. I've not had the time. It's funny. I've been married to my wife now for 34 years. All of that theater stuff was before she knew me. Interesting. So, so uh, when, when I have some old friends from either grad school or whatever, all that we're talking about is stuff before she had any. You know, every now and then she says, I don't believe it. I, you, ne you never did it. I mean, you do a lot of funny crap, but you never did the theater. So. <laughs> I think whenever he does retire, though, you should I, do I, a play. I will try to. The question will be, can I actually remember the lines anymore? That, yeah. I, uh, I just think that would be cool. To very see you on stage. It would be. It would be fun. If you had to pick a stage to be on, what type of theater do you like to do? Live theater, stage. Live theater, stage. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I've done a little bit of TV and, uh -huh. and almost minuscule amount of film they're all very different what i always liked about being on the stage is especially if you're doing comedy mm -hmm. is when you're on you know it yeah because you can sense the audience is hanging on your every word, word yep. and that's just it's just this enormously self-fulfilling isn't the word i'm looking for but it's just it's just this bump it's like yeah. being in sports yep you make a great play and it's like Whoa, that was awesome. Yeah, you um, get the shot of adrenaline. Sure. Yeah. The and is the satisfaction as you come down the stage and you know you did a good job. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. And everyone comes up to you after and says, you know. It wasn't so much that people would come up to you afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's that you know you did it. Right. It's a huge accomplishment. It is. Well, it's a connection. Yeah. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, I still do a fair amount of... Uh, although less than I used to, public speaking. Yeah. And I can do the same thing when I'm doing there because, it, you know, because you tell a story. The best thing about having the opportunity to get in front of our wholesalers and get in front of their sales teams is to tell them stories because they can relate to the story. And one of my primary missions is I'm the guy that has to go out and sell the story. Right. So some of this old theater background that I had mm -hmm. has actually been incredibly useful to me yeah. over the years. Very yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, I've no, done some stand-up stuff. In I've my never time. done any stand-up. Yeah. We're having a stand-up comedian come here in July. You should come check uh, it out. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll be here. Maybe you can get a five minutes, man. I was at a roast of this guy. Yeah. Uh, so our pastor. To yeah, him. our pastor. Uh, you know, he stepped down to go lead a bigger church somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And before he left, we roasted him, and I was one of the roasters. Ah, cool. <laughs> it was so amazing. It was a very Ill unfiltered thing. Irreverent. It was very fun. Just fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was Good. very very fun. 
But uh, I saw a side of you that night that I didn't know. I yeah. was like, Ryan's getting up there to do a roast? All right, uh, dude, I can do it. Man. Actually, Gil, the guy who's doing the production, helped me out a lot with it, too. I ran all my jokes by him. I need to filter it all down because I have a lot of stand-up material, but I work too much. I don't, I don't have time. Right. I right, don't have right. time to get on stage. Yeah. Although, as much as I'd love to, I don't have time. Yeah. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. That business connection back, you, you said being on stage connects uh-huh. and I, being in the space like that yeah, you help create there. you're creating art that's connecting with people like you're right. creating a space for people to connect mm-hmm. um, you're creating art that connects with people it all makes sense yeah mm-hmm. it'll be cool if, when that time comes though you can get back on stage at some point we'll see <laughs> <laughs> what do you like better the tap room or the production of the beer well, I like the business itself because, as I'm, I'm pretty sure I said earlier, you know, small business is just fascinating. The beauty of small business, if you're paying attention, is you should never be bored. And so I've had very few really yep. boring days in the last 40-some years. Yeah. So I kind of look at the tap room and the production side and the wholesale side, and I still go out and do store samplings as that's all part of the same thing. So I don't really like one better than the other. I mean, I don't... It was like uh, I just asked you which kid you like better. Right, right, right. Caroline's is me. (laughs) Funny enough, people people would ask him all the time, well, what's your favorite beer? Right? Uh Because, you know, we make a lot of different styles and he, for a long time, your response would be, I love all my children. And if I was in the room and he would say that, I would just kind of perk my head over to be like, ahem, yeah, but the uh, winter storm. But it, but you also have to look at you know at, at everything has got its own pluses and minuses. So I mentioned earlier, I still go out and do store samplings from time to time. I probably do I don't know six or seven a year, yeah. um, and I don't have to do those anymore. But yeah, like I could go to the liquor store and you'd be the guy. I'd be the yeah. guy back there pouring, pouring the samples. samples. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Right, but I I do it for a couple of reasons. First off, it sends a powerful message to the the retailer. And I'm usually going to pretty important retailers. Secondly, it sends a powerful message to my wholesaler that, you know, I'm still going out there and getting my fingernails dirty. Dirty, yeah. Uh, Third, and this is really the thing that's probably the most interesting for me, is while I'm standing in that store, I'm watching what they're buying. Mm -hmm. Mm. So I'm getting firsthand market data that you can read all the rags you want, but standing in the store and watching what they're doing makes you go, Huh, okay, well, I was thinking this, but maybe not. Yep. There's a lesson in that right there. Well, yeah, I mean, owner, yeah, I do that a lot, too, going back levels. out in the field. Oh, yeah. and you got to be close it. to what's going on. Yeah, yeah. You I'm have sure to I be. piss a few people off from time to time. It's like, would you just get out of my goddamn bed? But, <laughs> but I'm never going to do that. I don't try to be intrusive, but I want to understand because at some point, I mean, I may need to make a decision on something at some point, and I don't like making decisions in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. solid. That's gold. Yeah, you, store samplings are really helpful because, and I, I haven't done them since I've been back, but I used to do store samplings a lot when I was here in 2012 to 2019. Um, what I would like pay attention to is if someone would approach the door and they, you know, here's loose cannon or whatever, and then another product right next to it, I would see would they pick the loose cannon or would they pick the other product? And I wanted to understand if someone was choosing something else, which product were they choosing over our beer and then why? Yep. What about that product? What's the packaging like? How is that product being messaged? Would you ever ask them, like, hey, why'd you choose that? Well, for samplings, it's great because people, you know, if they're willing well, to sample, they'll come up and they'll talk to you. They'll ask you yeah. questions like, what do you have today? And you can ask them questions, too. Yeah. What beers do you typically like? Mm-hmm. And you'll get a variety of answers. Some people will straight up be, I'm not really big of a beer drinker. And then you can still ask them, like, what kind of flavors do they like? Do you like lighter stuff? Do you like darker stuff? You know, if they are a beer drinker, you can get a little bit more specific. But yeah, it, it's a great way. You're right in front of your customer to understand, you know, what they like, what they don't like. Yeah. It's really helpful. Do you have a favorite? I asked him about the tap room versus production. Like, I, I feel like you love this space. That I we're do in. love this space. Um, so I don't want to, yeah. What, what's well, the I'm a marketing person. So like this is a space where this is where people can come and experience our brand. And that's mm. really important to me. I want to make sure anyone who comes through this door 
you know, they're getting the best experience ever from the beer that they're trying to the service that they get to the vibe. You know, if they're coming with a group of friends or families, like they're staying for a while because they're enjoying the space and hopefully having great conversation. We do a lot of different events here and I'm pretty much willing to do any kind of event that's appropriate. <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing. Well, we have the dog event. Yeah, or you we, already have that, right? No, yeah. that's coming up. That's okay. going to be in May. Um, yep. And we partner with a lot of different, you know, charities or other local businesses for like pop-up type events. And it's great. Like the more people that we can come here to experience us, like this is where you're going to get it exclusively. You could go to a restaurant and see our beer on tap, but we're not exclusive there. We're yeah. one of other, you know, eight or nine right. brands on tap. Or same thing with, you know, festivals or a concert, wherever you're going, this is where you get us mm. exclusively. And you can experience heavy seas, mm. you know, yeah. in a very intimate, personal way. It, yeah. There seems to be something unique about that. Like, I'm trying to think of another example of a business. Like, you have a product that goes out. You mm -hmm. said you're in 18 states. Right. But you also have home base where people can exp I mean, I guess there's, like, other food places that you can go and, like, experience how something's made. But in a lot of small businesses don't have that dynamic. Of no, the I mean, product I mean, that goes we, out we, in the home base. We have, I mean, for many, many, many years, breweries in this state couldn't have a tap room. It wasn't legal. You could have a public space, but you had to give all the beer away. And so a lot of places, like, you know, we'd have a little tasting room, and then you go on a brewery tour. Uh, and then you could give them a couple of samples at the end of the tour. And mm -hmm. But, you know, finally being able to make this a commercial venture, which is a buckle-on value added to what we're doing definitely helps us afford to be able to turn this into a marketing platform for mm -hmm. for the brand itself so mm -hmm. uh, i mean that's why you know we're going to start working on a lot of the decorative touches that's part of the reason i bought the damn cannons uh, <laughs> is, come see the cannons i thought it was see. just because they were damn cool how many times well, can we they buy are, the cannons they are they are they, <laughs> they are very cool come see the cannons i don't think a man needs yeah. a reason to buy a cannon when that <laughs> offer comes available to him i think you just buy the well, cannon I and mean, figure out what you're doing yeah but see for, for us between loose cannon double cannon hazy cannon yeah, it made sense. you know drop a cannon i mean come on yeah i had to have some cannons yeah yeah they're they're got to be everywhere Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, that was a good buy. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. This is the last one. This is oh, that's, well made. That's the well made. We probably should have done that one first. So, so the well made lager. Why? Because it's like fifteen percent. No, no, no. It's <laughs> it's it's very light. The, the uh, oh. it's just a classic lager beer because uh, look, we've been making big ass artisanal beers for years. Sometimes you just want a goddamn beer. Yeah. And that's why we made and the well-made. And there are people that come here all the time, and they say, I just want something light, and right. this is the answer oh, yeah. for it. I drink a lot of this in the summer. I was going to say, this like, I just cut the grass kind of beer. Yeah. 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 And I'm going to sit on the deck. Right. Yeah. I just exactly. cut my grass, and yep. I smell the grass as yeah. soon as I took a sip yeah. of that. It's good. Yeah, it's it really nice, good. It's just a nice, solid mm -hmm. beer. Just a beer. <laughs> just so. a beer. This is the Hazy Cannon. Now, that is the impending doom. Impending doom. Fuzzy, fuzzy impending. Animal. But Buzzy. over there, that's Loose Cannon, which is this, our yeah. flagship. You know, mm -hmm. I'm assuming both of you have tried it. Oh, yes. oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. celebrate yeah. Double Cannon a little bit more than Loose Cannon, just because I, I love the. You like the big that's, chili. That's ones. what's in my refrigerator Double right Cannon's now. Great. <laughs> okay, so just keep in mind that is what I call a shoulder brush beer, and it, okay, this is explain. a term with you may not be familiar with, but that means that after the fourth one, you reach up to brush something off your shoulder, and it's the floor. <laughs> <laughs> very fun um i, I love the cocktails it. too the orange crush was very very good yeah, thank um you. you nailed the cherry limeade because you know when you go to chick-fil-a and you get the cherry on top it's like one of the canned cherries like the, right. you nailed it it's good. exactly what it's supposed to be yeah those are out now so yep. keep an eye out for them and then obviously we have them here in our tap room so if you're local come on by give them yeah. a try that's what's fun about beer, I think, is like you're drinking something, you know, it's a liquid, but you can pack all these other flavors into it. So mm -hmm. when you can put chocolate in something or yeah. coffee, it's just mm -hmm. you know, oatmeal. It's such an interesting delivery mechanism yeah. for taste. And also with IPAs and other really hoppy beers, I mean, hop is a plant and there's so many varieties of hops. So I think people can correlate this well with like wine you know depending on which grape you use in a wine it's going to really dictate what flavor and it's the same thing with hops mm -hmm. and hops are grown all over the world at different climates and everything so 
you know, one hop will have a completely different characteristic than another. So depending on the types of hops we use, you know, we can really change and control the flavors and the aromas. Yeah. So That's it's, part it's of the all craft. Art and craft. Art and craft, yes. And art and craft. Art. Just tell there was an accent about to come out. <laughs> That's so great. That's so great. <laughs> So the pirate walks into the bar. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so when he walks into the bar, the bartender notices he has a, a paper towel draped over his head. He says, hey, what's up with that, man? He says, I got a bounty on me head. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So we're an ultra. Got him. <laughs> I'm here all day. Try the view. <laughs> I love it. 